there are two things that I'm really excited about today and I can't wait to share them with you. First of all, you'll know from last week's video that I just cleaned out my garden pond. It was filthy, it was mucky, just completely filled with two main types of algae. Definitely check out that video. Um, it was a really mucky job and it was cold as well. Good thing I had that coffee with me. Anyway, I cleaned it out in the nick of time. I came up to the allotment on Valentine's Day and guess what? Frog spawn. My resident frog had actually laid eggs, three large clumps of eggs in the pond. I am ecstatic. When I saw it, I literally whooped. It was crazy. Um, if I would have waited just a few days later, it would have been too late. I wouldn't have had time to clean the garden pond out and I would have had to wait until a later date and there'd be more things living in it and it would have been a nightmare. So I got it done just in time. And we're gonna go over there in a second because the barley straw has arrived and I'm going to put it in the pond um, as a preventative measure. The second thing that I'm really excited about is that you'll know from my February garden tour that I was contemplating taking a little bit of extra land. I mean, one allotment plot is enough work, but this little space came up available right next to my current plot and I decided to take it. So today we're gonna to have a look at my new space and talk about what uh, my plans are for it. But first, let's go check out the pond. back of my pond there are three clumps of frog spawn, so frog eggs, and they were literally laid in my pond a few days after cleaning it. And they look like, actually a friend said yesterday, they look like chia seeds. <laughs> They're like little gelatinous balls with a little black dot in it, and the little black dot is a future tadpole, and it's going to take these about three weeks to hatch roundabout. And then after the tadpoles come out, they'll feed on the jelly that's inside the eggs and also any kind of algae that's growing on the eggs and in the pond as well. Which makes me a little bit concerned for these eggs because there are tadpoles in here already from last year. It's crazy to think that they overwinter, but I just saw one like swimming around these eggs just here. So hopefully the tadpoles that are in here don't uh, wipe out too many of the eggs, but you know what, they need food as well. so maybe they'll have that jelly and decide they're gonna become frogs this year. So you'll notice that there's also a net back here and I'm gonna pull it back over um, in just a second. But this is to protect the frog spawn from birds. So birds like seagulls and pheasants, they see this as a real nice treat. And although I'd love to give them a little treat, I want these guys to grow up and become frogs from my garden. So I'm going to protect them with the net. So the reason that I cleaned out the ponds uh, last week is that it was an absolute mess of algae. And some algae is good. Uh, the frogs will, or the tadpoles will feed off of it. Um, and it's just part of the pond's ecosystem, but it was just too much. It was clogging up the entire pond. So I cleaned it out manually. And this is my first attempt at natural algae control. Now this is barley straw and I've attached it to a rock because it needs to be partially submerged in my pond. And what happens is that as the barley decomposes over time, so this will take about a month or more, it releases natural chemicals into the water that help to control algae growth. Algae, algae. <laughs> so I put it on a rock and I'm just going to gently put it down into the pond. There's a frog in here somewhere and I don't want to squish her. And now for the exciting part of this video. So having an allotment is really hard work. You've got to put in a lot of effort every week keep it free of weeds, maintain plants, etc. And that's why I've stuck with just having one plot up until now. But 
this plot, as you see behind me, has been vacant and it's been abandoned and neglected. And it's been like that for the past two years. And uh, the tenant gave it up recently, officially. So I decided that I would take half of it on. And I was humming and hawing about it for a while because it is going to be a lot of hard work to get it into good nick. But there's some really great soft fruit bushes on the plot. There's blackberries, there's red currants, I spotted some rhubarb coming up. So it's actually quite exciting to think that I'll have some extra berries this year. And also I want to have a space for growing pumpkins and some other things that might not fit on my plot this year. So let's go have a look and see what's growing and kind of think about some ideas for what to grow on this plot this year. This is my current allotment plot and it's sized 30 by 40 foot. And the additional piece that I'm taking on is over here and it's sized 30 by 20 foot. And I thought we could start by having a walk around its perimeter. Look over there, there's a robin. <laughs> So at the top corner, we've got some thornless blackberries and some really good supports. So these guys will definitely be staying. And it's, they're a bit of a tangled mess. They need quite a bit of TLC. I think some pruning is going to be one of the first things that needs to be done before it starts warming up. This is some kind of a current. Red currant or black currant is already starting to sprout leaves. It also needs some cutting back. Now these, these are all raspberry canes. And these will be cut down to the ground ASAP. So here's the bottom corner. So this post shows the bottom corner of my new plot. There's my shadow. Hey! <laughs> So, walking in this direction. So this post is the west boundary. And walk straight up here. And this is the extent of the land. It isn't too big. It's not too big but it's overgrown. So this summer, that's going to be my plot. That mess there in the front, and then my current plot over there. It's a great view, isn't it? Right down here, it looks like chicory. Is that chicory? It has like a bitter tasting leaf, I think. Mm-hmm. Yep, it's not really my thing. Ugh. That's the thing with growing your own. Grow what you, what you like to eat. <laughs> Look at this. The last hardy cauliflower. I might actually just cut this and put it into a curry. That'll be the last one for a while. Some old supports. There's a lot of grass in here as far as weeds, but not too many dock weed. There's a thistle here, that's all right. Black currant, oh wow, look at that. This is gonna need some care as well. So we've got a black currant bush right here, or red currant, we'll see. And then right next to it, we've got the base of a really big thornless blackberry. This guy. I'm not sure why he planted them so closely. Maybe it just started growing on its own. This plot has been a bit, um, well, it's been taking care of itself, really. I have to sort that out. This here, this is Melissa Balm, I think. No, no, it's not. It's a wild version. But let's have a smell and see. No, this is... I think it's called wood sage. It looks like it's definitely in the mint family, but it grows wild here on the Isle of Man. Here's another black or red currant. I suspect that's a red currant. I 
think that I've seen plenty of red currants over here before. This guy also, wow, oh, he's a bit overgrown with grass. But yeah, inside there, there's another fruit bush. Wow, this is gonna be hard work. And yet another one. I can see some red currant and black currant jam and jelly and maybe wine in my future. More, more, wow, lots and lots. I actually have another one that I need to, need to transplant, so this may be the berry patch. Oh, look at this. Rhubarb. Now the friend of mine who had this plot, he is a rhubarb fiend. One plant is generally okay for a family. Oh look, there's another one. But uh, he absolutely loves it. And in fact, I think that this rhubarb actually came from one of my plants. I split a rhubarb plant, a Victoria variety, some years ago and gave him a few of the, of the crowns. This must be from my original plant. Wow, it's kind of a mess. This is manageable though. I can do it. I can do it. So my plans for this is I'm going to leave the berry bushes where they are for the most part, but I want at least one long bed. And I was thinking that down here along this corridor, this was just a walking area, a path really. I think that I would like to tidy up both sides of this, create smaller paths either side and put a long no dig bed down the middle for pumpkins. What do you think? What would you do? It's really promising, isn't it? It's just a little bit of extra land. It adjoins my current plot, so that makes it super handy. And although it's really neglected right now, it won't be for long. So in a couple of weeks time, a friend of mine who has a gardening business here on the Isle of Man is going to help me clear it. So within the space of a day, hopefully, <laughs> we're going to tidy this up and transform it from neglected into at least a semblance of tidiness. And if there's time, we're also going to try to lay the foundations of a no-dig bed. Just had a, another delivery of manure, so that should get us started. Now, the thing that I'm really interested in right now is what you would do if you had this plot. So say you took this on, what's the first thing that you, you would do and what would your plans be for this little bit of extra land? Leave me a comment below and let me know what you think. And then also, before you go, I definitely wanna invite you to check out the video from last week that shows the pond in its very mucky state before I cleaned it for the frog spawn we saw earlier. There should be a link that pops up on the screen. So check that out, let me know what you think and enjoy. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again next week here on the Lovely Greens YouTube channel.